to Alaska in 1971 as a missionary. The Trans-Alaska Oil Pipeline uh, began its construction phase in 74. And because of Mr. Williams' love for his country and concern for the spiritual welfare of the pipeliners, he volunteered, he's also a pilot there flying people, to serve as a chaplain on the pipeline with the subsequent full support of the Alaska Pipeline Company. Because of the executive status accorded to him as chaplain, he was given access to information documented in his eye-opening book, The Energy Non-Crisis, unfortunately out of print. Because to understand what's happening now, you got to read that book. And everything in that book from 1980 that caused oil execs to get fired, you name it, now it's all plain view admitted. After numerous public speaking engagements in western states, certain government officials or concerned individuals urge Williams to put into print what he saw and heard, stating that they felt this information was vital to national security. And actually, Ken Fromm actually helped him rewrite the book. He wrote part of it. That was the Atlantic Richfield head of operations. Mr. Williams firmly believes that whoever controls energy controls the economy, thus the energy non-crisis. Now, Ken Fromm died back around Christmas of cancer. We can now say it's Ken Fromm. I knew it was Ken Fromm. So did uh, other people like Dr. Stan Monteith. Monteith's the type to not, even though he believes Williams to go off what he's saying, he went and figured it out and called him himself. He's, he's also... Talk to the other guy who's living, was a former oil company CEO, Big Three. And there's been a strategic plan. And, and as we go to Lindsay, I want to break it down to you this way. Brzezny Brzezinski writes books saying they work in 25 and 50 year plans. David Rockefeller, in his uh, book he wrote five years ago, where he admits they want world government. I forget the name of it. Will you Google uh, David Rockefeller's uh, autobiography? I, want to put it on screen it's a side shot of him on the cover uh, we've got it back there but it, on page 400 and what 35 it, he talks about how yes we're going to get rid of sovereignty yes we're going to do this but they talk about 25 and 50 year plans and an example of that because the general public has been taught oh wall street thinks in quarters no they get you to think in quarters so you're blind to the larger geopolitical neo-feudalistic neo-mercantile system that is the new world order but in the 70s was a key catalyst for the next 50-year plan. That's when these decisions were made. And I've read Rockefeller, I've read Kissinger, I've read Brzezinski, basically say almost everything but in a veiled way that Lindsay's been told. That's the key. I can verify all this separately. Just Williams is directly talking to these folks. Now, and the info Lindsay gives us mirrors what we get from inside Bilderberg. But here's an example. I'm listening to WOAI this weekend. And they had a newscast about the 50-year water plan for Texas with the federal and state government and how we were 20-something years into the last plan and they're going to reassess it and launch a new 50-year plan off the old plan for, for uh, water wells, reservoirs, desalinization plants on the coast, on and on and on, and, and how the, the federal government's doing tests right now with desalinization of saltwater aquifers as a test as part of the 50-year plan. We are on 50-year time frames with subsets of 25, where sometimes they readjust or reassess. And so talking to Williams last night, I'm going to give him the floor here in a moment, when he briefed me on this, everything he was saying, again, was already public intelligence, but they were filling in the missing pieces. What Williams wrote about in 1980, about the secret deals with Kissinger and the Arabs to buy T-bills, and how... At a time in the future, they would shift to the global currency. That's in Trilateral Commission documents from 1975. But people would laugh at Williams about that. Now all of, of the previous part of the plan is public. He's going to give you the rest of the plan and what the globalists are telling him is, is going to unfold. Now remember, Lindsey Williams was here in October, in November, in December. And in October, on record, we wrote articles about it. Oil in the next year, six months to a year, to go to 150 to 200. Turmoil in the Middle East, not even so much war. He said they told me turmoil. That's on record. Destabilization campaign. And that that would then lead to, to quote, China, watch the big one. Now the other big oil company, former CEO, is giving the full breakdown of this program in the Middle East, what it's going to do in the U.S., what it's going to do in Asia, and the rest of the globalist blueprint and layout for what is about to happen in the next several years and the decade uh, preceding it or following it. And so now, Lindsey Williams, I'm going to attempt to give you the floor. 
Um, and in, in fact, you're going to be hosting the show, uh, at least for this segment and the next. Uh, I'll take you out at break, but I'm going to actually go in the control room, only way I can control myself, and I'm going to be in there taking notes on points and questions I have for you. But I sat there for 30, 45 minutes with you last night and just shut up while you talked, and it was 10 times more powerful than anything we've ever done on the radio before. Lay it out. Let's start at the beginning. Alex, you're a gentleman. Thank you so very much. Crude oil this morning is up $8 a barrel. Libya, the capital city, Tripoli, is burning. The capital building in Libya is on fire right now. Gaddafi is in power since 1969. And this morning, light, sweet crude oil is $108 a barrel. I have been told that it's going to 150 to 200. I would think that 200 would be more like it. Libya has shut off all of its present oil sales. It says it will carry no more contracts. 1.6 million barrels of oil per day go to Europe, not to America, but to Europe. This is going to drastically affect America because now Europe oil supplies have got to come from somewhere else. I would say that the Middle East is pretty much uh, number one item right now. It's going to go to Iran, and it's going to go. The, the crisis is going into Saudi Arabia. So let me begin, as I have been told by the people that have given me information over these years. As Alex has just said, I want to start from the beginning so you can understand because this is very involved. In 1901. The first, what should we say, gush here of oil in the United States of America took place in Beaumont, Texas. It was called Spindle Top. It went up 200 feet. At that point, the major oil companies were formed. They didn't ex exist before 1901. Texaco, Shell, Standard Oil, of course, which is a Rockefeller family, and Chevron had their beginning at Spindle Top in 1901. This set the stage for the beginning of some things that would revolutionize the entire world and the use of crude oil and energy. Then in 1903 came Henry Ford, the first assembly line automobile in America, and then a man by the name of Mercedes in Germany built the first assembly line German-produced automobile. Now... At that time, American oil was 25 cents a gallon or less. And our economy was booming beyond everything the world had ever known. Oil was discovered in the Arab Middle East world. Now, keep in mind that prior to the time that oil was discovered after 1903 in the Arab world, that the Arabs were nothing but nomads roaming the deserts riding camels. But 60 years ago, the Arabs began to, for the first time in many, many centuries, to come to the forefront. This brings us up to where we are now. And as Alex has suggested, I want to just cover a few pointers, and then I'll go back and take each one of them individually so that you can know the intricate parts of it. Uh, Ken Trom of Atlantic Ridgefield. This is Standard Oil. Of course, you recognize ARCO, Atlantic Richfield Standard Oil Company, uh, one of America's greats back in those early days. And the, 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 the different oil companies, uh, Texaco, Shell, Standard Oil, and Chevron, basically divided up the, the Arab world. And each one of them took a country and said, we will go and produce the oil fields in that country. The Arabs didn't have the money to produce them. And Mr. Ken Fromm was given the job by Atlantic Richfield of producing the oil field in Kuwait, Dubai, and that part of the world. Ken Fromm is a gentleman who has given me so much information over the years. We've spent hours and hours together talking about what is happening in the Arab world, and which I'll go back and give in detail later. Now, about 1977 through 81 was the Carter administration. You'll remember that the... Um, the Secretary of State was Mr. Henry Kissinger. He traveled abroad to every major oil-producing country at that time and tried to cut them a deal. I will go into that deal that he cut, 
and why it is so significant to what's happening in America right now. Because at that point, we began the indebtedness of the United States of America by a design plan, and I'm so glad that Alex mentioned the 50-year cycle because this is exactly what we are going through at this time. Uh, I had not thought of that, but Alex, you're right, and I have heard this in many places. At this point, OPEC uh, had an agreement, and there was every nation in OPEC, every major oil-producing country in OPEC, uh, agreed to Henry Kissinger's deal with the exception of two. One was Iraq, and that's the reason that Iraq had to be conquered and uh, taken out. And the next one was Iran. Iran has had every kind of problem imaginable because they would not go along with Mr. Henry Kissinger's agreement back in 1977 through 81. Now, at this point, America began its debt spiral. And someone needed to buy the United States debt. Mr. Kissinger knew this, and as a result, the part of the cutting of the deal was that they would buy our T-bills, buy our debt. In turn, we would buy their oil. And at this point, it was decided by the elite that the American oil fields would not be produced. Folks, I hope you're hearing this because it's so significant to what they have told me now is about to happen. The American oil fields would not be produced because the foreigners, we had to buy our oil from them in order for them to turn around and buy our national debt, and they had to keep it that way. They closed up oil wells everywhere. They shut down major production from the Arctic Wildlife Refuge. What was the Bakken Oil Preserve and others here in the Lower 48? They likewise said we cannot produce them because if we do, then these other countries will not be obligated to buy our debt. This also began the time that the elitists, the bankers and others, the World Bank, the IMF, began to bring about the destruction of America gradually. You've heard me speak of the Devil's Messiah plan. Every bit of this fit into their perversion of the United States of America. Then came 1970. I'll just give you a quick overview, and then we'll go back since we have time in the program today to take these one by one. In 1970, the Alaskan oil was found, somewhere around 1970. In 1974 through 76, the Trans-Alaska Oil Pipeline was built. And in 1976, one of the largest oil fields ever discovered in the world, and in particular in the United States of America, it's described in my book, The Energy Non-Crisis, Gull Island Will Blow Your Mind. This is a story within itself because after Gull Island was brought in, I was in the room with the oil company officials. I later asked Mr. Fromm, why don't you bring this oil to the American people? I, had, I knew already why. They couldn't. They had no choice. They could not bring gasoline back down to 25 cents a gallon again. They could not bring it to 50 or 60 cents a gallon. They, they couldn't because they were, the, the national debt had to be bought by someone. The Federal Reserve was obligated, and the national debt was growing so greatly. And now Gull Island's brought in, and I said to Ken, why don't you bring this oil to the American people? He said, Chaplain, this is classified. We are not going to release that oil. We will never announce the oil field and the Arctic Wildlife Refuge, what is there, until, please, this is so important, put it down in your notes. You're hearing things today for the first time. He said, we will not produce these oil fields until we have crude oil to somewhere around $200 a barrel. I said that in different places. It got me in trouble. I later was called on the carpet by the elite, and I was threatened. And it was mainly because of this one subject right here. They had to get it to $200 a barrel. You are going to see 150 to $200 a barrel oil in the very near future. You're probably talking somewhere in the neighborhood of 9 to 12 months. They have to take it there because the problems that have developed they developed them, by the way. The problems and the crisis that they have developed in the Middle East will grow so great until America will not be able to get its oil 
from the OPEC oil-producing countries of the Middle East and Saudi Arabia in particular. 